Opening scene, calm but serious tone. Hello, I'm Dr. Emily Chen. And today I want to talk to you about a condition that affects tens of millions of people, yet is often misunderstood or ignored. GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. But if this happens more than twice a week, it could be GERD. Have you ever felt a burning sensation in your chest after eating? A sour taste in your mouth at night? You might chalk it up to something you ate. GERD is a chronic condition where stomach acid flows backward up into the esophagus due to a weak or relaxed valve called the lower esophageal sphincter. That acid doesn't belong in your throat. These include a dry cough, especially at night, hoarseness or sore throat in the morning, bad breath or sour taste, feeling of a lump in the throat, and chest discomfort that's sometimes mistaken for heart problems. This highlights the importance of timing when it comes to our meals and GERD symptoms. It's called silent reflux for a reason. Some patients don't have any heartburn at all. These include fatty or fried foods, which take longer to digest and increase stomach acid production. Chocolate and peppermint can relax the lower esophageal sphincter, making it easier for acid to flow back. Let's talk about Barrett's for a moment. It occurs when the lining of your esophagus changes because of chronic acid exposure. Or of those, about 0.5% per year may progress to esophageal cancer. Now, these numbers might not sound high, but when you consider the millions of people affected by GERD, it adds up fast. Esophageal cancer is particularly concerning because it S, often caught in late stages when it S much harder to treat effectively. These might include losing weight if you're overweight, quitting smoking, avoiding trigger foods, eating smaller meals, and not lying down for at least three hours after eating. These range from over-the-counter antacids for occasional symptoms to prescription strength, proton pump inhibitors for more severe cases. In some cases, surgery might be recommended to strengthen the lower esophageal sphincter. They may also suggest elevating the head of your bed to help prevent nighttime reflux. It's your body trying to protect itself. But this change comes with risks. This is why it's crucial to recognize the symptoms of GERD and seek appropriate medical care. The cells lining the esophagus become more like those found in the intestine, a process called intestinal metaplasia. We'll also explore some of the latest research on GERD and potential new treatments on the horizon. Stay tuned for more information on managing this common but often misunderstood condition. Many people dismiss their symptoms as just occasional heartburn or indigestion. However, if you're experiencing acid reflux symptoms more than twice a week, or if over-the-counter antacids aren't providing relief, it's time to talk to your doctor. With proper diagnosis and treatment, most people can find relief from their symptoms and prevent long-term complications. While this might sound like a good adaptation, it actually increases the risk of developing esophageal cancer. Spicy meals can irritate an already inflamed esophagus. Carbonated drinks can increase stomach pressure, forcing acid upwards. Citrus fruits and tomatoes are highly acidic and can worsen symptoms. Coffee and alcohol not only relax the sphincter, but also increase acid production. Big meals, or eating just before bed, can put extra pressure on the stomach, making reflux more likely. It's about one in every five people. Over 60 million living with recurring acid reflux. Even stress and lack of sleep can aggravate reflux. When we're stressed, our digestion slows down. It can lead to esophagitis, which is inflammation of the esophageal lining. This can be painful and make swallowing difficult. Over time, Repeated inflammation can cause strictures or narrowing of the esophagus, which can make it hard to swallow and may require medical intervention. And we may be more likely to reach for comfort foods that trigger GERD. Poor sleep can weaken the lower esophageal sphincter, making nighttime reflux more common. And many of them don't even know it. Why? Because GERD doesn't always feel like what we typically think of as heartburn. You might be more susceptible if you're overweight or obese, which can increase your risk by two to three times. Smoking cigarettes raises your risk by about 70%. Eating late at night or lying down immediately after meals can also trigger GERD symptoms. Age is another factor, with people over 50 being more prone to the condition. Pregnancy can cause temporary GERD due to hormonal changes and pressure on the stomach. Regular use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen or aspirin can irritate the esophagus, making GERD more likely. And frequent consumption of alcohol or caffeine can relax the lower esophageal sphincter, allowing acid to flow back more easily. And when it repeatedly irritates the lining of your esophagus, you get symptoms like heartburn, 
acidic, or sour taste. Chest pressure, regurgitation, and difficulty swallowing. But how common is GERD really? According to the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, over 20% of American adults have GERD. In fact, GERD can cause a range of silent symptoms that people often miss. So who's at risk for developing GERD? Interestingly, a study from Harvard shows that eating after 8 p.m. triples the risk of nighttime reflux. But what about the things that can make GERD worse? Several triggers can exacerbate GERD symptoms. It's not just food and drink, though. Now let's talk about the real dangers of untreated GERD. Long-term acid exposure can seriously damage the esophagus. But perhaps the most concerning potential complication is Barrett's esophagus, a precancerous condition. Around 5-10% to of GERD patients develop Barrett's esophagus. It's important to note that not everyone with GERT will develop these complications. However, the risk increases the longer GERT goes untreated. But what if you're not sure whether what you're experiencing is GERT? Your doctor may recommend lifestyle changes as a first step in managing GERD. If lifestyle changes aren't enough, there are several medication options available. Remember, while GERD is common, it's not something you have to live with. In the next part, we'll cover more detailed strategies for treating GERD both with and without medication and discuss when it's crucial to see a doctor. Welcome back. The first part, we talked about what GERD is, who it affects, and why it can be dangerous. Now, let's focus on what you can do about it. How to manage GERD both naturally and with medical support. The majority of people with mild to moderate GERD can significantly reduce symptoms with lifestyle changes alone. Here are eight essential changes I recommend to all my patients. Before we talk about medication, let's talk about what you can do on your own, starting today. You can use bed risers or a wedge pillow to achieve this elevation. Eat smaller meals. Large meals increase pressure on your stomach, pushing acid upward. By reducing portion sizes, you can help minimize this effect and ease your symptoms. This gives your body time to digest food properly and reduces the likelihood of acid reflux during sleep. Avoid late night eating. Finish your last meal at least two to three hours before lying down. Elevate the head of your bed. Lifting your upper body by six to eight inches helps gravity keep acid down, lose excess weight. Even a five to 10% drop in body weight can relieve symptoms dramatically. Excess weight puts pressure on your stomach, making reflux more likely. However, they're not intended for long-term use. These can relax the lower esophageal sphincter or increase acid production. They reduce acid at the source by blocking the proton pumps and are usually taken daily for two to eight weeks. It's important to note that ronitidine was withdrawn in many countries due to safety concerns. Always follow your doctor's guidance. Taking them for too long, especially without medical supervision, can cause problems. These may include vitamin B12 deficiency, leading to fatigue and memory issues. Magnesium deficiency, causing muscle cramps and arrhythmia, Increased risk of bone fractures, especially in older adults, and a higher chance of gut infections, such as C. difficile. Avoid trigger foods. Common ones include chocolate, coffee, alcohol, citrus, tomatoes, spicy and fried foods. If found, it can be monitored and managed carefully. Always discuss risks and benefits with a GI specialist before considering any surgical option. Here are red flags that mean it's time to schedule a visit. Heartburn two plus times per week, difficulty swallowing these tests are safe. Quick and can provide clarity about your condition. Chest pain not explained by heart tests, unintended weight loss, chronic cough or hoarseness, and symptoms that wake you at night. Only a small percentage of patients with Barrett S progress to cancer each year, about 0.5% annually. Subscribe, someone in your family or friend circle may be silently suffering too. Stay healthy, take care of your gut. If you've had GERD for five years or more, talk to your doctor about screening. Others may need a short course of medication or close monitoring. But what matters most is this. Don't ignore it. Make small changes today that could protect your long-term health. Chronic acid reflux can cause permanent damage if left untreated. Quit smoking. Nicotine weakens the lower esophageal sphincter making it easier for stomach acid to flow back into the esophagus. If discontinuing, taper off slowly. Abrupt stopping can cause acid rebound. Most importantly, reassess with your doctor regularly, especially if symptoms persist. 
If you don't respond to medication, don't want to take medication long term, or have complications like strictures or Barrett's, you may be a candidate for fund application, a minimally invasive surgery to tighten the esophageal valve. Cut back on alcohol. It increases acid production and relaxes the valve between your stomach and esophagus, potentially worsening GERD symptoms. Consider stress reduction techniques like meditation, yoga, or deep breathing exercises. This condition involves a cellular change in the lining of the esophagus due to repeated acid exposure. It's considered precancerous, meaning your risk for esophageal cancer goes up. You'll be surprised at what patterns you discover. This can help you identify your personal trigger foods and situations. Manage stress. Chronic stress can worsen reflux and slow digestion. Here's a tip from the clinic. Keep a food and symptom diary for two weeks. If lifestyle changes don't bring enough relief, it's time to consider medications. Here's how we usually approach it. Antacides such as Tums or Rolaids offer quick relief for occasional symptoms. Ow. They work by neutralizing stomach acid within minutes. H2 blockers like famotidine or ranitidine reduce acid production and work within one to two hours. They can be used daily for a short period. Proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, esomeprazole, or pantoprazole are most effective for moderate to severe GERD. While PP is our powerful tools, it's crucial to understand that long-term use is not without risks. So what's the safe plan? Use PP as only as long as needed. Let's revisit one of the more serious complications of untreated GERD, Barrett's esophagus. But here's the good news. Barrett's can be detected early with endoscopy. Most people won't need surgery, but there are cases where it might be considered. Other newer treatments include the Lynx magnetic ring implant and endoscopic procedures to repair the sphincter. Now, let's talk about when to see a doctor and what tests to expect. Your doctor may recommend tests such as endoscopy, pH monitoring, or esophageal manometry to assess motility. To wrap up, GERD is extremely common and very manageable. Most people improve with simple, consistent changes. If you've even struggling with GERD symptoms, even mild ones, now is the time to act. Talk to your doctor. Start a food journal. Right. And if you found this helpful, please like, share, 